Let's use the trial and error method to factor the following trinomials. We'll start with 3x squared plus 10x plus 8. Trinomials will factor into the product of two binomials, so I can set up my parentheses right away. Now, the first term is going to, of the trinomial is going to factor into the first location. The second term, the last term rather, is going to factor into the last locations of the binomials. To see how that works, we're going to need to factor the 3 and the 8. Now, luckily, 3 only has one way that you can factor it, but 8 has several, 1 and 8, 2 and 4. So when we go to put our factorizations of 3 and 8 in, we are going to have multiple ways that we can do this. Now, luckily with the 3, there's just one consistent way. We could write 1x and 3x to get 3x squared. One note, 1x is just the same thing as writing x, so most people will just write that as x. And then we could use plus 1 and plus 8 as a factorization of 8. But keep in mind, the other thing you can do is put the 8 in the opposite location and 1 where the 8 was originally. This will give you a totally different middle term when you multiply it out. This is why this is called trial and error, is that even though we're still using 1 and 8, you get different results for the middle term. Likewise, you get different results if you use the 2 and the 4 instead of the 1 and the 8. So we could also try out x plus 2 times 3x plus 4, and we could try out x plus 4 times 3x plus 2. These are four different options for factoring 3x squared plus 10x plus 8. Only one of them will work, and how we choose or decide which one works is by checking them. Remember, to check them, what we really want to figure out is if the middle term works. The middle term comes from the multiplying the inside and the outside terms. So multiplying the inside terms in this example, I get 3x, the outside terms is 8x, so that gives me 11x when I add them up, which is not the 10x I need. So this one is not going to work. To the next one, we get as the inside 24x, outside 1x. And by the way, as soon as you see that 24x, you know that's going to be way too high for the 10. That doesn't work. Next example, the inside is 6x. The outside is 4x. That's great. That's a 10x. That one's going to work. That means that the others, any other options you have, aren't going to work. So we could actually automatically cross that one out without checking. You could check it to make sure, but there's really no need once you find your result. So this should be our factorization. Let's do a full check to make sure. So if we do a full check, 3x squared for the first term, plus outside would be 4x, plus inside would be 6x, plus 8 for the last term. And when that you multiply that out, we get 3x squared plus 10x plus 8. That's exactly where we started. Now, this looks kind of messy. One thing about trial and error is that you will, won't have to try as much as you get used to the process. You'll, you'll have a suspicion probably at the beginning, the 2 and the 4 is going to work, and you can think about, well, would it be better to multiply the 3 by the 2 or the 3 by the 4? And you can get a set, very quickly get going with the, the answer with the trial and error method once you've done enough practicing. Initially, though, because it is messy when you're first starting, I do recommend that you use scratch paper to show out these options, and then on your work, just put in the final answer that works. You can also, if you like to erase, use an eraser to try something, erase, and try something else. Your choice. Um, but I'm going to erase in the other examples I show, but I do recommend showing your work just on scratch paper initially. Showing it so you see what you've tried and what you haven't. All right, so let's go on to the next example. Because I've kind of made a mess, I'm going to erase some of this here, um, or at least mark it out initially, so that it doesn't get in the way of the 5x squared minus, 18, minus 13x at my work. Actually, I'll just erase it instead of marking it out. So it looks a little nicer here. All right, so let's try this out, this next example. 5x squared minus 13x plus 6. We're going to use a binomial times a binomial again. We're going to look at factoring the 5, only one way to do that, 1 and 5, and then we're going to factor the 6, 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Now before we go further, look at the middle term. We're going to be aiming for a negative 13x. A negative 13x, the negative right away should be a 
um, a game changer, what we have is no negative factors over here. We want them if we want a negative 13x. So think about the 6. 6 can be created by multiplying two positives as we've written down here, or you could use two negatives to get a positive 6. The only way to get the negative 13 is if we are dealing with negatives, so let's use negatives there. Now, putting the 1 and the 5 into the first location, 1x, 5x, again, you don't need the 1 there, you know, most people would just have the x, and then using the 6, we can use either 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. One hint, if I were to multiply that 6 by the 5, I'd get 30, which is really big. So I'm going to start with the 2 and the 3 first. So minus 2, minus 3. If I go to check that before I try my next one, I have a negative 3x and a negative 10x. And what we get there is negative 13x, and that's exactly what we wanted. So here, trial and error, just by avoiding the 6 initially, because 6 and 5 makes 30, which seemed too big, I kind of got into the right result pretty quickly just by using a little common sense. Now, you may not have gotten that the first try. If you didn't, then you would try other options. So say instead on the first try, I did x minus 3, 5x minus 2. So I used the 3 and the 2, but I used them the other way around. That wouldn't have given me the right result because I'd get a negative 2x and a negative 15x from the middle terms, which would add up to negative 17. So remember, you're always looking for the right combination, and that order does make a difference. So I'm going to go back. I don't need this one. This one, we got our answer on the first try. Don't forget, once you get the answer, you should do a thorough check. Check the whole thing. So do a complete FOIL process of complete multiplication of the whole thing just in case you've made a mistake with the 5 or the 6. So if I were to do a full check on this, x times 5x would be 5x squared, outside would be negative 3x, inside would be negative 10x, and the last terms would be positive 6. Adding all of that up that are like terms, I get negative 13x in the middle, plus 6. Notice all of the signs are what we started with. All the numbers are what we started with. That checks. So in this case, I got my answer on the first try. Let's look at the last one. We have 6x squared plus x minus 15. Again, set up your binomials. Now, this time, our leading term does have multiple options for factorizations. You could factor 6 into 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. And then negative 15 has multiple options as well. Negative 1 and 15, negative 3 and 5. And notice this time, because I had a negative 15, I'm using one sign that is negative, one that's positive. When you multiply to get a negative result, you must have one of each sign. So make sure you put that in. Now, when we go to do this, notice when we only had one option up here in the last example for multiplying out the first or the leading term, we actually had four different ways we could factor or tries for factoring. When we have two options like we do here, we're going to have four for each. So we're going to actually have eight different options. So we're going to need to at least try as many as we need, but keep in mind you've got a lot of different things you could potentially try. One thing to note off, off the bat is that 15 multiplied by something is going to give you a really big number. You really probably don't want to multiply 15 by the 6 or the 15 by the 3. 15, because it's going to give you such a big number when you multiply, is probably going to be my last option for trying things out. I am most likely going to try all options involving the numbers that are smaller, because if you look at what I want for the middle term, I want a positive 1. So we want numbers that are a little smaller to work with. So we could try the 1x and the 6x as the first option for 6, and then the minus 3 and the plus 5 instead of working with the 15. When I try these, the outside terms give me 5x, the inside terms give me negative 18x. That does not add up to what I want. That gives me negative 13x. So the, the 1x com and the 6x combined with the 3 and the 5 in this order didn't work. Let's try the other direction with the 5 and the 3. So if I had the 5 in the first location and 3 in the second location, so let's say we had a 
5 here and the minus 3 here, we would get a negative 3x plus 30x. Here's something else to watch for. Look how big 5 times 6 ended up being, 30x. When I add those up, I get 27x. That's even bigger than I needed. So that's too big again. We don't want to use the 5 and the 3 in that direction. Now we've now exhausted using the 5 and 3 with the 1 and the 6. So we're going to change the 1 and the 6 around now to look at different options. So instead of using the 1 and the 6, let's use the 2 and the 3. So 2, 2x and 3x, and then use the minus 3 and the plus 5. When we multiply the outside terms, we get 10x. When we multiply the inside terms, we get negative 9x. There we have a positive 1x. There's our option that works. So it can get a little messy in this example. I erased as I went. You could, on scratch paper, show out what you've tried so you can see where you've been and where you have let to go. But here, trial and error got me the answer, I think, on the third try. It's not too bad when you're really just having to multiply the outside terms out. Now, let's check this, do a thorough check. I'll erase my middle, my semi-check here where I've just checked the middle terms. If we check the whole thing, we should really foil the entire thing out. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. Outside terms is 10x. Inside terms is minus 9x. Last terms is minus 15x. By doing a full check, we're actually also checking the first term and the last term to make sure we've got the right signs. And then the middle should be what we got before. 10, positive 10x minus 9x is positive x. And that's exactly where we started. So there's three examples of using the trial and error method. It does take a little bit of patience. Like I said, if you practice it a lot, it actually goes pretty quickly.